Elhamdülillah ve sallallahu ve sellem ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala ahli ve sahbihi ve sellem aleyküm ve rahmetullah. What I want to offer you today <coughs> is uh, the commentary of the Quran, um, the interpretation of the meanings of the Quran by um, two great scholars, an imam, Jalaluddin al-Sayyuti and Jalaluddin al-Mahalli. Uh, what they've done, uh, so this particular tafsir, which is very short and concise, is uh, still, uh, with, you know, in spite of being, being very concise, is a reference to the students of knowledge. So a lot of people um, don't really, even though it's very short, don't really go back to it, but the students of knowledge do. So this book was composed um, uh, for, with the purpose of being really, really concise and short. Uh, which is a rare uh, undertaking for the science of tafsir because uh, tafsir is usually uh, a science that requires a very extensive and encyclopedic uh, effort uh, to elaborate on every single word and then the context of the, the phrases and the, the, the surah, the, the verses and so on. So for that, you know, so if it is so expansive, so long, um, the tafsir uh, ends, up, ends up being uh, in, in the hundreds of, of lectures and classes and and lasts for several years, and we've seen that as well. And um, so even the, the shortest commentaries, even the shortest ones, like this uh, this book, Jaluddin Suyuti, ha has been plagued or you know tested with very long commentaries. So what we're trying to do is to keep it very short. We'll see how we, we, we can manage um, to, to make sure that everybody benefits. Everybody, the students of knowledge, uh, usually are not very long-winded and, and I start with myself I'm not very long-winded when it comes to uh, to do that uh, so for so the challenge will be to offer a short commentary on already a very short commentary the commentary of Al-Jalalain and we are going to try and go through it with uh, a very short commentary first of all we want to we want to get familiar with uh, the book itself uh, its academic uh, values so we want to go through the objectives of the book, the topics covered, the methodology of the two great scholars, Jalaluddin al-Sayyuti and Jalaluddin al-Mahalli. First of all, Jalaluddin al-Mahalli, his name is uh, Jalaluddin Muhammad Ahmed ibn Muhammad al-Mahalli al-Shafi'i, who was born in 71, 791 Hijra, about 700 years ago, and he passed away in, 8, in 864. So he lived about, about 71, 72 years, around 73 years. <coughs> so he lived um, in that... Uh, that span, rahmatullahi uh, alayhi, and he wrote this book very uh, much near the end of his life, and he was known for uh, his very very unique uh, intelligence. Uh, he was called the Taf uh, Taftazani of the Arabs. Uh, Taftazani is, was uh, is a Sa'd al-Din al-Qurasani, al Taftazani who was born in uh, Taftazan Qurasan, which is today's Iran, about. Seven, before, before obviously Jaluddin al-Mahalli, and um, he was a Hanifi scholar, so then therefore a scholar of, of a Sunni scholar, and he he covered a lot of topics. He was a master in in usul al-fiqh and ilm al-kalam. He was very well known for his ilm al-kalam, the philosophy of especially around the topic of aqidah. Uh, Imam al-Mahalli was um, also so he was known for such brilliance, very intelligent very sharp thinker so sharp that um, they, they used to, to call they used to say that his intelligence uh, breaks uh, diamonds you know how, how we say that uh, a sharp voice or a loud sound will break the, the glasses his intelligence was so sharp that it bro it broke through the you know the firmness of, of, of diamond. So um, and and by the way, to the, today that old proverb, that old Arab, Arab proverb, has uh, found its way in, in the modern technology. Today we have um, a um, cybersecurity model called um, the diamond model of intrusion analysis. You know this model is so powerful that uh, you know you cannot break through it. So it's it's interesting um, how intelligent he was and. Um, in spite of his intelligence, he suffered from something else. You know, he wasn't um, uh, his skills of memorizing and retaining no, n not knowledge, but retaining material texts was and was average. You know, was more more of the average. 
And uh, we are told that one time he wanted to memorize a, a little article or a book, and Yahmila Kurrasa. And it was so difficult. You know, he memorized Quran, obviously. He memorized a lot of the, the basic books of, you know, uh, not, I'm very sure the, the hadith, the books of hadith, and so on. But, you know, scholars in general, they just pick up a book and they start memorizing. But he couldn't. He just couldn't. So he started memorizing this book and it gave him it gave him a fever. He was so stressed that he he turned feverish and then he just gave up uh, memorizing. So he just focused on on thinking and writing and uh, extrapolating uh, ideas and so forth. And he was very pious, very wali'a, you know, a very high level of, of, uh, of piety. Um, and he was enjoying the good, uh, and, you know, and, and and forbidding the evil and he would speak up the truth uh, would not be afraid of anybody he was very um, very unique in that sense so that's we find that sometimes uh, amongst the scholars throughout history that some of them were excessively brilliant but they didn't have the skills of memorizing and others were the other the other way around and others uh, they were very likely to have both they were both very intelligent for and, and had the, the power the power and the ability to to memorize uh, texts. Um, Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa sallam wa sallam wa sallam wa sallam wa sallam wa So we were speaking about uh, uh, Jalaluddin al-Mahalli and his name is al-Mahalli because um, there is a quarter or a village uh, or a suburb these days called uh, al-Muhalla al-Kubra so anyone who's from there is Al-Mahalli or Al-Mahallawi, but in truth he was never born there. He uh, may not even have visited it, but um, he's associated to that because of, of family. He was born and raised in Cairo, and he was of a Shafi'i um, uh, uh, scholastic upbringing. And for that reason you find that in the book of Al-Jalalain, uh, most all of his uh, jurisprudence conclusions are Shafi'i, uh, Shafi uh, from the Shafi'i school. <coughs> and uh, we have a lot of details about his life, his biography, because of his students who have written about him, like Imam al-Sayyuti and Imam al-Sakhawi. Uh, they have all written about him, so we have a lot of details. And uh, only near the end of his life, he has uh, he had started writing about the uh, the commentary of the, of the Qur'an, which is usually what most scholars do. Most uh, great scholars don't feel... Um, in, uh, ready for the science of tafsir until they've mastered all of the sciences and he started in the middle of the Quran so he started exactly in the middle um, Surat Al-Kahf -Al and he ended with Surat An-Nas the last surah of the Quran and then he went right back to the beginning and he began with Al-Fatiha and he began again and he moved on to Al-Baqarah for 26 verses and he passed away Rahmatullahi Alayhi very interesting and uh, so he didn't he never named he never named his book um, he passed away before he was, it was done and so but his students uh, refer to that part of the of the book which which is the the second half of uh, al jalalain as the tafsir al quran al azim lil mahalli um, as for as sayyuti so uh, moving on with um, the great scholar jalaluddin as sayyuti um, <coughs> when Al Mahalli passed away, As Suyuti was 15 years old. Um, six years later, six years later, uh, Rahmatullah Al Jamian, he completed. Um, um, he decided to complete. He decided to take on the the job that his uh, teacher had started but never finished, and he did something very. Um, very commendable, which is he followed the same manhaj, the same methodology, which is very rare and very difficult to do. So he began uh, the beginning of uh, Ramadan in the year of 870 Hijra. He was less than 22 years old of age, uh, and he was one of those uh, scholars who wrote abundantly. Al Imam Sayyuti was known for that extremely, extremely abundant works that he's left behind is one of the three most uh, popular people that have written abund abundantly. He, the first book that he wrote apparently when he was eight years old and he wrote a uh, commentary later on called Sharh al-Isti'ada wal Basmala. So he was preparing himself as he was studying the, um, 
the details of, of tafsir. So he has the commentary of A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Rajim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Sharh Al Istiada Wal Basmala. It's not a book, it's a, an article, but um, for some reason, everything that he wrote, such as the, the, the next thing which he wrote in, when he was 18 years old, and Nuqaya Fi Ithmami Diraya. Uh, it, for some some reason, because of the baraka, it, they're all very well uh, uh, circulated. They are printed and circulated many times. Rahmatullah uh, alim uh, And he also wrote another book on tafsir when he was around uh, the age of 23. It's called Tahrir fi Ulum al-Tafsir. So again, here he's explaining the sciences um, that are associated with with the tafsir. So this was around the age of 23 or 24. And um, and I'm, I'm estimating that he has spent about two or three years because that's exactly when he finished at the age of 23 or 24. Uh, he had finished, the, 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 he completed the, uh, the tafsir of Imam al-Mahalli. Al um, and I think that this, this work, this work of the tafsir al-Jalalain is a, a little miracle by itself if not a major miracle, because what we find, we find that uh, Imam Al-Mahalli has written the second half. He passed away first. He, he started with the tafsir, but he wrote the, the second half, exactly the same, the, the, the second half. And then Imam Al-Sayyuti completed the, the other half, which is the beginning. And the, their names are both uh, Jalal al -Din, and that's why they were, they were, you know, some of the scholars have called it Jalalain. And we'll see a little bit later why it was called a Jalalain. The other very um, commendable thing is that Imam Sayyoti used um, used the exact same methodology as Jalal al-Din al-Mahalli. Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam wa alaykum. So, um, uh, the name of the two scholars is Jalal al-Din. Uh, we've seen we've seen that, and uh, the name of the second scholar is Sayyuti, Jalaluddin Sayyuti, <coughs> and um, he was um, you know praised uh, by following the exact same methodology as his teacher, uh, Jalaluddin Al Mahalli, and um, he was truly also very brilliant. He uh, like we said earlier, he started uh, his first book was uh, the uh, he wrote it at the age of eight. He uh, uh, memorized Quran at the age of 10. Uh, he ended up writing over a thousand books, some say 700, depending on, on how you, you I guess, you um, you classify the books, if it's in several volumes, if it's the small articles and so on. But some have said that his books amount to 1,194 1, books, works. Um, his name is a Sayyuti, as I said earlier, and it has several ways of uh, pronunciating pronunciation. خمسة لغات أسيوت أسيوت الأسيوت الأسيوت سيوت سيوت. So he's uh, from Asyut, which is a, a suburb or a village in uh, in Egypt, and he had never even seen that place uh, for sure. In his case, he was born in uh, Cairo and died in Cairo. Uh, so Al Asyut is a, as a reference to his grandparents, who were all very noble and uh, and scholarly. He was born in uh, eight uh, forty nine Hijra, and uh, in the beginning of Rajab, and he was known for her. Uh, and um, and his father was also a great 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 scholar, uh, truly uh, a great scholar. He had a large he had a large library and he, apparently his mother when she was pregnant with him his her husband or his father has asked her to go and fetch a book from the library and when he went in when she went in she delivered and that's why he he became popularly known as Ibn al Qutb the son or the child of the books and perhaps that's um, you know indirectly affected his psyche he had um, become very attached to to books and he fell in love with knowledge and very early on, like I said earlier, he memorized the Quran at the end of, of 10. And at the end of 40, he totally secluded himself, isolated himself. He became, he, he, uh, uh, he, 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 he socialized, socialized normally, going to the marketplace, uh, praying in the mosque.
but not sure if he gave this the Friday sermon, but certainly not the fatawa nor the, 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 the lectures. So for about 20 years, from the age of 40 to about 61 or 62, at, in 911 Hijra, he passed away. So he had spent over 20 years just writing and, and um, you know, just writing and writing and writing. Radiallahu anhu jami'an. So his tafsir, tafsir al-Jalalain, as, as we've said earlier, tafsir al-Muharrar. So I've said that this is like a very special format, but in, in truth, it had become the standard format in the days of those two great scholars. Um, they, they would, the scholars would, were starting, started to produce works because there were so many volumes of every form of school and so on. They, they didn't want people to become uh, confused and, and uh, lost. So they all started to write small, short, concise forms of each of those sciences and they became a reference to the scholars as well as a, um, a guide to the beginner like uh, Al-Khattabi, uh, Al-Iraqi. Al-Iraqi would, would, would write at the beginning of his uh, Al-Fiyah, he would say, نَظَّمْتُهَا تَبْصِرَةً لِلْمُبْتَدِ وَتَذْكِرَةً لِلْمُنْتَقِيُ وَالْمُسْنَدِ uh, I have composed this poem to help the, to, um, to help the scholar, uh, to help the scholar be, you know, as a reference to the scholar, and also to uh, give 